Hey, welcome back. Uh, it's been a, a few weeks since I've put out a tutorial, but um, I got a good one for you today. Today we're going to learn how to make uh, this Dreamcatcher pendant. And you can see I've done two here, um, and they're both a little bit different, so I'll kind of go over some uh, techniques or ways of doing things that look that leave it looking more open, and then other ones that leave it um, more closed up. And we're gonna learn how to do these little fringy things on the bottom. So here's what you need. For the circle frame, I am using 14 gauge wire, um, but you can use other sizes of wire. I'm sure 16 gauge would work. And of course you can use thicker than 14. Uh, it's kind of your preference and what you have on hand. I bet you can make a lot of sizes work, but I am using 14 gauge today. The Dreamcatcher portion, the little web, I am using 24 gauge wire. Um, I do purchase most, if not all, of my copper wire from Rio Grande. So if you like these big size um, kind of bulk orders, they're a great company to go through. I think their, their pricing is uh, really great. And then the fringe down below and also this little bale, we are using 20 gauge copper wire. So to make the frame, you will need something round to wrap around. Uh, you could use a ring mandrel or I've used the top of a um, bottle before, that'll work too. Um, don't necessarily need to have all the like specific tools for making this stuff. A lot of times you can find something that's laying around the house. I have this one pre-made um, because I have just recently learned how to solder. So I've been pre-making these ahead of time for projects like this. I, well, obviously I'm not going to do a soldering <laughs> video today. Um, I will show you how to make this design without this being soldered. Actually, these two are, neither of them are soldered. But um, if you have the equipment and the know-how, go ahead and uh, solder these and it'll just be a, a nice little addition to the design. Uh, so we'll put that one aside. Let's use, got the 14 gauge wire and you can choose how big of a circle you wanna make this. I'm just gonna cut off about, I don't know, like five or six inches, maybe four eyeballing it here and then let's see let's use the the top of the bottle so then just take your wire make sure you're applying pressure and wrap it around try to get this in frame here sorry guys back up a little bit oh hello <laughs> okay so I'm gonna pull this in towards my body what you want to do is make sure you can kind of grab you can even use pliers here and really pull because that'll make sure that your wire is snug up against the bottle cap and it'll you'll make sure you have a nice like round and even circle that's not too bad but it's hard to do it in frame here with the camera so hold on I'll be right back but I switched over to a mandrel because the uh, the top of the bottle was making this a little bit larger than I wanted it so I shifted down we've got some a ring here and then you'll need your uh, cutting tool and you're gonna go in and to make sure that you cut this uh, flush so that the two ends aren't like pinched together if I'm gonna trim this side I want to come in make sure my flush cutters are facing the side that's going to remain cut that off and then on this one where they meet I'm going to cut it flush as well boom Then we have our ring. Next, we'll grab our 24 gauge wire. 
Let's pull out, I don't think we need a whole lot. I would say like half of your arm span. So what is that approximately? 12, maybe about like two feet or so, depending on how large you're making this pendant. Before we start creating the web, you may want to map out where or how many times you're gonna attach the web to the frame. So whether it's a one, two, three, four, five, six um, kind of attachment point or whatever, you can always go in with a Sharpie because you can polish the Sharpie off later. And let's say, of course, that tick is, or the, the joint is gonna be our first. Um, and we want another one straight at the bottom so then we can kind of plan out and make sure it's even. So, oh gosh, I'm horrible at getting even. Let's see how I do. <laughs> Somewhat. <laughs> yeah, here's the thing. I can't eyeball like anything like this and keep it straight. I'm the person who could like never hang a photo on the wall. <laughs> it would always be like lopsided. So I'll do my best here. And again, you do not have to use the Sharpie, but it is easy to polish off the, the mark afterwards. All right. And what I'll have you do next is let's make the that joint the bottom like if it's a, a clock it's at six o'clock and the reason I'm gonna do that is we're gonna start at the top and it might be easier just to get the wire started without having it fall through the joint plus we're gonna have a lot of stuff at the bottom so it's it's gonna cover everything up so now take your 24 gauge wire I like to go through first and start at the back so I'll use my index finger and thumb to kind of pinch the tail, hold it in place, and we're gonna loop around. Now, if you, to get it started, if you wanted to, instead of pulling it through just to get it going, we could use that open joint. Well, maybe. Did such a good job of closing it up. <laughs> and we're gonna go around. That's once. Twice. Now this is a design preference, how many times you want to loop around this wire, but I don't know, I would say like at least twice probably. You could do more and that would be kind of cool. And then from here, so you'll notice that this one over here is more open, it's more loose, and that this one is tighter. So if you wanted a loose weave, you're gonna take your weaving wire over to your next um, mark. If you wanted it loose, the more space you leave, the more slack between the two points, the looser weave you're gonna get. If you wanted it tight so you can get more of the, I'm calling it the webbing, I'm sorry if there's a different word for it. Uh, but if that's the case, then you're wanna, you'll want to keep your 24 gauge wire as close to this wire, if not like right on top of it. Hold it in place, go around the back side. We can still use that open joint to pull around once, to pull around twice. Let's smoosh it together so it looks like that. Now I do want to come make sure I'm back on the inside before I take it over to the next mark. So I'm going to keep that tight, tight, tight. Even if it's not right on the mark, that's okay. Go around once. Twice. And now we're at the bottom, so I wanna make sure these two joints, or this one joint is together. 
come through the center. And now I don't want to fall in between the cracks. So I'm going to do two wraps on the left side and two wraps on the right side. Y'all see that? Sorry if it's not focusing. Okay, so this is what it looks like right now. You can go ahead and smush them together. Maybe not all the all the way so that it doesn't fall through, but I think that'll be good enough. And then continue around the circle the same way. Make sure that you are holding this in place because if you don't, it's going to get all messed up. So use your opposite hand to stabilize it. Pull through. And around. All right, now we're back to the beginning, and this is always the part for the longest time that choked me up. You can go ahead and trim off your tail from the beginning. And when you get back to the beginning, Go ahead and wrap around. I'm just going to do like one wrap around. So now all of those are going to be sitting next to each other. And then, of course, come back through the middle. We've got our first round of web done attached to the frame. And now we're going to change it up a little bit. So from here, now take the end of your wire like so and you're going to poke it between the 24 gauge wire and the frame. Guide it through. Now this if you've ever done uh, dream catchers with string your wire is going to behave a little bit different. You can't just go through and pull it because the wire is going to kink up. So you really have to make sure you're guiding the wire so it doesn't kink and then break. On you. Now once it's through, I'm gonna pull down. So I'm gonna put some tension on it so it's caught there. Pull it through the center. Give it another good pull. Of course don't pull too hard that you bend the frame or anything like that. Know your strength. And then I'm gonna do the same thing through this one. Now if you get it real close, sometimes, let's see if I got it little tool here. If it's too close, I might have to go in and kind of create some space. That's okay to do also. So don't worry if you get it like too close to your frame and you can't get your wire through, just kind of go in there and pull it down. So I'm going to go between the frame and the weave. Kind of guide it through slowly. Make sure it's pulled. And then you're going to pull down and through. And I pull down again. And don't worry, sometimes at the beginning it doesn't look like it's, it's anything, but it will turn into something. There's one I have to kind of pull away from the frame so I can get the weave through. So 
on my hand. down. So I'll go ahead and do the next two and come back around to the beginning and then I'll take you through um, the next round of the weave. All right we're back to the beginning. So this is where it's a little funky here because when we originally came around and ended it we had to take that wire over to the first one. So it's kind of funky up here but I'm going to put my weaving wire through that little loop that we created. Oof. It was kind of hard to get through that one. I'll do my best to even it out and if the wire didn't quite go straight All right, and then, of course, pull down. The next loop we're gonna go through now is gonna be this one, this one, this one, and so forth around. And we're gonna do the exact same thing we did before, so make sure you come through. Take the end of your weave wire, put it through this triangle. Pull it over and then we're going to pull down. Push through. Go in. Pull through. Pull down. Always make sure you pull down so you get that, um, that web look. So I'm going to continue going around. Maybe I'll just continue filming, but I'll put it on fast forward. Um, the other thing too is if you've got it, you've got the technique down, you can just go ahead and keep going and fast forward <laughs> this video. You can always jump ahead to the next stage, but I'll keep going. I'll keep the camera rolling. We'll just speed it up a little bit, we'll put some music over it. All right, now we're back around to the beginning again, and that's that that there's a little junction point up here that appears to be messy, but I'll just make sure that I've got, I know where my loop is. You can kind of pull that down a little bit so it's more visible. And so this time around, this is our loop. And then each of the triangles we're going to go through. start to see now that it's um, taking form and I am by no means an expert at making dream catchers this is the way that I make them um, I know that they're not like perfect and symmetrical because I don't work on them being perfect and symmetrical I kind of like how they come out um, a little asymmetrical and a little funky and uh, I don't know. I like it. I like the look of it. It's kind of uh, like a bohemian style and I think it's cool. So this is just how I do it. 
I wanted to pause for a moment and also show you that if you wanted to put beads in here, all you have to do is slide your bead on. before creating your next loop. So that's how you would add the tiny beads into your dream catcher. Let's continue. So this is gonna continue to become smaller and smaller. So it's kind of little tedious work working to get the wire through each of the triangles and it's work to make sure that your wires don't kink up. So just keep plugging away. We aren't gonna go all the way closed. We're gonna leave um, some space because our bead is gonna go in the middle and then we're gonna wrap around the bead to kind of uh, fill up any of the open spaces. But I think I might go around once more and then we'll add the bead in. So I will bring you back when we're ready for that step. All right, I've reached my stopping point. So I've ended here on the side because my bead, which I think is like a five millimeter, bead is slightly oval shaped so when I put it in I want the weaving wire to go through the center and I want that bead more like up and down than side to side so that's just a little aesthetical preference so I'll go ahead and put the bead on the wire and what I'll do is I'll kind of pull this uh, forward and then bend it so that the bead doesn't sit in there lopsided like so. And then take your weaving wire and somewhere on the opposite side push it through one of the loops. And you gotta make sure you guide this without breaking, kinking anything. Okay, so now it's sitting. I'm gonna bring it back through. Doesn't really matter if you wanna go right next to where you came in or go across. I think I'll just come in next to the exit. Back side. And now with the remaining wire, I'll start to coil around. I tend to start up a little bit higher because I want that much of the bead showing, and then I'll work my way down, heading towards the base of the bead where it meets the weave. Wrap it however many times you like. I don't really like that in there. I don't know how that happened. I'll just go in and squeeze everything together. <laughs> Looking better. Okay. And now, to finish this up, now to close this off, I'm gonna go ahead and trim off some of the wire so it's easier to work with. I'm just gonna find a place to push this weave back through.
is still okay on the front. And then I'm gonna bend the weaving wire over. I'm gonna trim them off and I'm just gonna bend them and tuck them in next to the bead. Just like that. So it's nice and secure. It's not going to uh, scratch anybody. Nothing's going to fall out. Um, now, depending on how he comes out, you can pick how you want it to hang. So sometimes I might think the bottom <laughs> is going to be the bottom, but then I prefer just depending on where the, the bead ends up being. So kind of like that direction's pretty cool, but I kind of want to cover up. Uh, I want to cover up that joint for sure that is now on the top. So it could hang this way. That's kind of cool. Or I could put that as the top. So then I was, I'm going to have to fit my fringe, this part, down at the bottom. And the bail at the top is going to cover up that joint. Or I could do it this way. Decisions, man. I think I'll go with this way. Or will I go with this way? I'm going to do this one. Because normally I like to have it at the bottom. Let's do a different style and have it more towards the top. Alright, that's settled. Let's move on to the fringe. Next is the fringe. So to give you a close-up shot, what we're gonna be doing, we're taking uh, pieces of 20 gauge wire and we're gonna create a little loop on them to go around the frame and we're gonna flatten them out and then twist to them. So to get the, the sizes of this, the first thing I want to do is decide how long I want the middle wire and then I work out from there and um, each of the different size of wires, I make them at the same time so that they're the same length but they progressively get smaller from the, the first one. So grab some 20 gauge wire and what I do first is I just guess, like I know I'm going to need, part of it is going to be um, the loop. And then if I don't know how much I'm going to need, I can always trim off more. So first what I'll do is go in with a pair of round nose pliers, grab the tip, and I want to make sure that this um, circle I'm creating here is large enough to go around whatever size gauge wire you have. So if I've got 14, maybe I need to go a little bit bigger. And also, if it's too snug, it's not going to move very well. So I would try to make sure you get this loop um, bigger than your frame. So once you create that, then you're gonna put a little counter bend in it. So I'm gonna grab where the two wires um, meet and then counter bend it up. So that way it hangs straight up and down. All right, and then go in when you've decided which is gonna be the bottom. And I'm gonna put it right through the center here. Oops, I didn't open it up enough. Hold on. There. And then you can kind of gauge, is that how long you want it? I kinda like that. That's pretty cool. All right, so we'll keep that one. Now the two next to it, we want a little bit shorter than this, but we want these two pieces the same size. So I'll go ahead and cut two more pieces. And I'm gonna create them at the same time. So use your round nose again, get 
that circle created. I put the counter bend in. And I can always straighten these out later, but then I'm gonna decide how much shorter I want them compared to the center. So I made these quite a bit longer. Um, and then I can go through, so if this one is my center, I want both of these cut shorter. And you can decide how much shorter. Let's try there. Okay, so I got the center <laughs> and then the two sides that will be hanging like that. Um, and then let's see with these other ones, how many sets did I do? I did three uh, sets. So we're gonna do this three more times, do it exactly the same way um, and just trimming each of the next ones shorter. So I'll bring you back in just a minute. The next thing we'll do is take our pieces and we're gonna flatten them out. So you'll need a bench block and a hammer. And I like to flatten this side. I suppose you could just lay it flat like this and hammer it because we're gonna end up twisting it, but I've always done it this way, laid it on its side and then go in. And you can choose how far up you want to flatten it. I tend to go up pretty far. Just don't hit your fingers. There we go. And so we're gonna I'm gonna hammer all of these and I'll bring you back for the next step. Now that all of these have been flattened, you're gonna go in with a pair of flat nose pliers. You could probably use chain nose, but I think these work great. And um, so we're gonna start twisting and what I suggest doing if you want more of a twist from the top down uh, is to start up higher and work down instead of just grabbing it from here and twisting. So I hold on to the hook, grab up high, and start to give it a twist. And just work my way down. And then I twist it until I like how it looks. And I want to, I like to make sure that this flat part is facing front because it's going to catch some shine. Now this part might kind of go a little weird on you. You are going to have to fix that, which is no problem. After you're done, just kind of go in, rebend it reshape it as you need. If it gets a little wonky, just go in there and squeeze it. Okay. Um, so I'm going to do that with all of them. And this is why it's kind of important to um, lay out your pattern first because you want these to hang somewhat as even and symmetrical as you can get them. So, oh wait, I was gonna do it the other way, wasn't I? This is gonna be my top, this is gonna be my bottom. go in and just close it up and we're gonna do that with all of them so go in and then just start twisting them I'll bring you right back
do is make the bale. So for this, you will also need 20 gauge wire, same as the fringe that we just finished. And let's take about, I don't know, let's say like four inches or so. Won't need too much. All right, with your piece, and flatten it out. Sometimes I like to use my nylon pliers here just to kind of straighten it out. And then find the halfway point close to it. I never quite get it. <laughs> and we're going to fold the wire in half. And then continue to pinch the wire together so you get this hairpin curve. And then the rest of the wire I try to straighten out too so that it's sitting next to each other. They're not twisting, they're just laying nice. And then I'm going to use my bail making pliers. You could use round nose or another tool. And then choose um, how large of loops you want depending on the size of your cord and the size of your frame. I'm going to go with the one, two, three, fourth one from the top. Pinch the end. Curve it all the way around. Okay, now we won't need this much to create another loop, so you can kind of eyeball it and trim. And if you're not sure, I always suggest keeping it a little bit longer because once you start to, to curl it back up, you can always go in and trim more off. So let's say that much. Grab the ends. And bring it all the way up. And then you can choose which direction you want it to face. Let's take this. We'll hook it on. Voila. Bien, muy bien. And now you're ready to put it onto your necklace. And that is it, everyone. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And be sure to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, at The Siren and the Pirate. If you do make one of these and post a photo, be sure to tag me. I love to see your work. Also, check out my website, www.thesirenandthepirate.com. Dot com. I've got a new collection up. I would love for you to take a look. I've got the shop is open. Um, direct links to my Etsy store are there. Um, as well as you can subscribe to my email list. I promise I do not send out a bunch of junk all the time, but I do spend out or send out special discounts, offers, sneak peeks and stuff to only VIP subscribers. So you can do that at my website. And uh, I hope you all are staying well, staying happy, and I'll be back again soon. Thanks so much.